Merry Christmas. Welcome to our service this evening. Uh, and also welcome to those of you who will be watching online. Welcome and a Merry Christmas to you all as well. Uh, if you are watching online, what I invite you to do is pause and uh, maybe get yourself a piece of bread or something and uh, a small glass of some sort of grape beverage. And uh, we will be celebrating communion later on in this service. So we invite you to, to get that ready. And then you can continue watching and enjoy the service along with we here. Um, in terms of communion, um, we are doing these individual things. And just so you know, um, there's the, the top layer is a thin piece of plastic. And you pull that up and you can get to the, the wafer. And then you break the harder plastic and pull that across and that gets you to the grape juice. But be careful <laughs> because, because like any of those creamers, <laughs> uh, you know, things happen. Uh, and uh, that's why you also got a napkin just in case. And then at the end of the service, I invite you to come by and just drop uh, your, uh, your used container in the basket and leave your candle in the basket. And also a reminder that uh, our, con our communion, uh, our collection plates are also at the door. I invite you, if you are in our um, congreg in in our sanctuary today, if you have a mobile device, please remember to turn it off. As much as I enjoy bells and whistles during service, and Christmas is special season for that. <laughs> I think we could probably uh, let the choir do their music. <laughs> Uh, in terms of next Sunday, there is no service here on this coming Sunday. Uh, I invite you to watch your favorite uh, church uh, online. Uh, also, uh, next Sunday, January 2nd, there will be, we'll only be doing an online service. There will be no live service uh, here uh, due to the increase of the Omicron variant. We are a treaty people. We give thanks to the creator for the gifts of this beautiful planet and for the blessing of this land. We give thanks to the original peoples of Halton Hills, especially the Mississaugas of the Credit River, for the stewardship of this their traditional territory for generations. We are committed to the care of this land and to work at reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters, addressing the injustices that they have suffered. We are all one people. We are all part of one web of life upon which the whole of creation depends.
paraphrase from Isaiah 9. The people who felt like they were walking unable to see the path before them, they shall see clearly as by a great light, a light that will shine on all those who live in the land of death or of nothingness. They will be filled with harvest joy when we see the bounty of the earth and know that we are cared for and will be satisfied. For us, a child is born. For us, a child is given, whose names are Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Love and Providence, the Prince of Peace. The child will rule with perfect fairness and justice and will bring true justice and peace to all the nations of the world. This is God's desire. This is God's promise. Let us pray. Christ, our God, whom humble shepherds worshipped at a manger, you are holy and most high, merciful and mighty. In the midst of our seeking for answers, on our journey to our own Bethlehems, startle us to wakefulness, to see the star and the light that guides us, that we may rejoice in your new and glorious dawn, that we might see the infant Redeemer in our times of need and rejoice in the light of your presence.
Let us pray. All loving God, we come to you this night in prayer. God, O oh Holy One, we know that you are with us wherever we are. Whether we are at home or in church, it is all the same to you. And we learn from you trusting and believing in the story of Christmas, so much so that we long to hear it every year. We accept your love for us, God, just as we are this night. And we extend that love into our community and to our world. To friends and to strangers, we are all one people longing to be seen and to be heard and to be loved. And we hold the story of Jesus' birth close to our hearts. And this blessing holds us and cradles us and carries us into our tomorrows. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, and is the story of the birth of Jesus. I'm reading from the New International Version. Listen. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. 
He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Bless these words to our use and understanding. Thank you, Sue. In the um, first, before making all that noise, in the 18th century, there was this bishop of England who later became the bishop of Calcutta, whose name was Reginald Heber, and he wrote a song. Um, and he was actually quite a prolific hymn writer. And he wrote a hymn called Star of the East. And the words go like this. Hail the blessed morn, see the great mediator. Come down from regions of glory. Shepherds go worship the babe in the manger. Lo, for his guard the bright angels attend. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning. Dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star in the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer is laid. Cold on his cradle, the dewdrops are for shining. Low lies his bed with the beasts of the stall. Angels adore him in slumber reclining. Wise men and shepherds before him do fall. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star in the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer was laid. Say, shall we yield him in costly devotion, odors of Edom and offerings divine, gems from the mountain and pearls from the ocean, myrrh from the forest and gold from the mine? Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star in the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer was laid. Vainly we offer each ample oblation, vainly with gold we favor secure. Richer by far is the heart's adoration, Dearer to God are the prayers of the poor. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star in the east, the horizon adorning, guide where our infant redeemer was laid. It's been a long haul, hasn't it? The second pandemic Christmas. 
The words to this song actually, as you might know by now, came to me through my YouTube feed. <laughs> and they came to me in this past summer. That's how long I've been planning this sermon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> And it came to me in a time where I think, I think we're still in lockdown and we didn't know which direction things were going and we were questioning what we're going to do with our church, how we were going to move forward, whether or not we are going to reopen and if we reopen, who will come and how will we manage it all. And the words came to me again. Sun, star of the east, shine in our darkness and lend us thine aid. Show us where our infant redeemer is laid. You see, the story of Christmas is the story of, of hope, of, of finding the answer that we're looking for. It's not just about a Christ child, but I think it's about every answer that we're looking for and longing for, that we're waiting for. We were waiting for an answer about reopening, and we needed the light to guide us to, re to, guide us to how we might do that. And the light did guide us, and we did find, if you like, the Christ child for us in our people who volunteered to help us to reopen. When I look back at all the different things that have been going on this past year, there's always that sort of anticipatory anxiety, right? That we're waiting for an answer and we're waiting and we're getting anxious about it and will it come and, and how will it come and how will I know it's there? And then a light comes. That star in the east shines a little bit and we begin to see the realization of our hopes and dreams the answers that we are looking for. That's what the Christmas story is about. That's why we have this long advent to Christmas. It's about waiting, looking for the answers we seek, looking for the resolutions we desire, looking for that light to guide us to where we need to be, and then to reveal the Christ child, reveal that answer to us. We are still looking for that Christ child, if you like, in this pandemic. We are looking for that, that relief. We're looking for that salvation from this sort of ongoing oppression of it all. And the light comes to us the light comes to us through vaccinations. The light comes to us through uh, advice on how to cope with this time. Advice on how to best take care of ourselves. That's the light until we reach that new Christmas at the end of this long journey. And we see the Christ child and we have all our hopes and dreams realized once more. Some of us are going through health crises and health issues and we're looking for solutions. We're looking for resolution. We're looking for, for some sort of good news at the end of it all. And that light of Christmas, that guiding star surrounds us in the people who care about us, in the wisdom of our caregivers, of our doctors and nurses specialists until we get to that place where we see that born that birth of a Christ child that that new day for us now remember where Jesus was born people were expecting him to be born in a nice place right he was the Messiah after all he was the king 
the king of kings. You'd expect he'd be born in a palace, someplace nice, at least something warm. But the resolution that we seek may not always be the way we expect it. It's always a surprise. And so part of that waiting is being open to seeing the light as it hovers on the horizon. One of the things I learned about uh, sailing, <laughs> not that I ever sailed, um, but I am a, you know, that YouTube feed. <laughs> so one of the things I learned is that if you want to see a star on the horizon that's just sort of right at the horizon line and it's twilight, you don't see the star if you look right at it. It's the wonders of our eyes, right? That blind spot that's right in the middle and our brain fills in all the rest. But because it's doing that, it doesn't pick up the little details. So the best way to see a dim star on the horizon is to look away from it and watch for it in the corner of your eye. That's kind of what the message of Christmas is. What you're looking for may not be what you think you're looking for, and what you're looking for may not be found exactly where you think it should be found. And so you need to be open, and you need to sort of look at things differently in order to see the light that takes you to your Bethlehem, that takes you to your Christ child in your life. Christmas, that time of resolution, that time of finding answers. We begin the Christmas journey with the stories of Zechariah, of Elizabeth and Mary, all waiting, all longing, stories of Simeon, waiting for God to surprise them with something that will make a difference, a positive difference in their lives. And they waited and discovered that God was indeed at work and the light was shining around them and that light was dawning and starting to shed the darkness until that day when Christ was born. Christ is born for us, that gift for us. Whatever you and I are looking for in this season, whatever we desire in our hearts, whatever answers we're seeking, whatever resolutions we are looking for, God reminds us that the light is around us and that there is a light that is guiding us if we look for it. And we will find our Bethlehem. We will find our Redeemer. And it may not be where you think. As a result of this whole thing that was going on, this kind of became a mantra for me. Every time I started to feel anxious, every time I started to think, oh, what are we going to do? Every time I started to feel overwhelmed, I remembered these words. And I kind of use them as a prayer. Brightest and best of the stars of the morning, shine on my darkness and lend me your aid. Star in the east, the horizon adorning, guide where my infant redeemer is laid. As we continue our paths, through this season, let's keep our eyes open. Let's keep our eyes awake and mindful of what's going on around us in the present so that we will see our infant Redeemer in our lives realized. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole of creation, for all people and nations according to their needs, for our friends, family, and neighbors seeking prayer, for those whom we name in our hearts. Let us pray to God, the weaver of the fabric of human life. We pray for our relationships, for those that are loving and for those that are fractured. We pray for all the different kinds of families and for those for whom the word family is painful. We pray for broken hearts due to the loss of a family member or close friend. In times of joy and in times of sadness, may we experience the comfort and healing of the relationships around us. Let us pray to God, the source of inspiration. As the light of a star once guided the wise ones to the light of the world, may the leaders of our world be drawn to and inspired by that same light a light that speaks of equality, the dignity of the whole of creation, compassion and care for the vulnerable, and the meeting of each person's daily bread and the need for peace. Let us pray to God, the source of warmth and of healing. We pray for those on the front lines in this pandemic, as well as those who seek healing due to illness, medical procedures, or any other need. We pray for Peter, Carla, Yvette, Dania, Betty, Rena and Ray, Gwen, Sandra, Jerry, and those whom we name now in the silence. May they know the support of love and light that enfolds them from those around them. Grant wisdom and understanding to all caregivers. Let us pray to God by whose word the universe came into being. We pray for the well-being of all those of the whole of the web of life. We pray for rocks and trees, creatures of the earth and sea, birds of the air. May we be always mindful of that we are all one family, a part of one beautiful web of life, and co-stewards of creation. Let us pray to God, who is as close to us as our own breath. As we enter each new day, May we seek to hear God's voice in all those around us, discerning what is helpful and what is not, so that we might grow and succeed in our lives. We pray for those whose hope is challenged, those who bear burdens that no one can fully comprehend. May they find their Christ child, the loving comfort, wisdom, and guidance they need to bring hope to life in their lives. Let us pray to God, the breath of inspiration and being. We give thanks for the blessing of everyone gathered here and those who gather with us at home. May the light of creation shine upon us 
and may its light within us guide us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of that profound depth of love that supports and surrounds us and the whole of creation. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. We light a candle and pray to God who sent Jesus the light of the world. We pray that we might have the courage to take the risks to follow that light, making a positive difference in our lives, the lives of those around us, and the whole of creation. May we find what we long for as we hear Jesus' words and pattern our lives after him. Hear our prayers of the prayers of your whole creation through Christ, your inbreaking light, as we pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. Friends, we are surrounded by the love of God the Creator. So we know that God is with us here and now. We lift our hearts to God 
and here in the presence of the whole of creation and of God moving through the web of life, we give God thanks. We praise you, God, among us, for on this holy night we found your child Jesus, the answer the whole of creation was looking for, lying in a feed box, born in Bethlehem, one of the poorest among poor people. And Jesus came to live with us, to bring hope in times of fear, peace in times of danger, joy in times of darkness, to bring your love in every time. Though poor Jesus was rich in you and taught us to share our wealth, though often without a home, Jesus always lived in and taught us to welcome everyone to every table. Though living in a time when many people found lost and confused, Jesus showed us all the way to your realm. Even when we didn't understand his words of light and life, Jesus loved us. Jesus knew us all. Lost sheep, found coins, hidden treasures. And when we in ignorance put Jesus to death on the cross, you in your love broke open the tomb and gave new life to everyone. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends and took bread, saying, Blessed are you, holy God, maker of all, for you bring forth bread from the earth. And Jesus broke the bread and gave it to all, saying, This is my body given for you. After supper, Jesus took a cup. Saying, Blessed are you, holy God, maker of all, for you give us wine to gladden our hearts. And Jesus gave, it, Jesus gave it to them, saying, This is my blood which is given for you. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. With this bread and with this wine, we celebrate the birth and life of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us in these gifts and make them holy so that we, your people, being fed by holy things, may share hope and peace, joy and love with the whole world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time I invite you to peel off the top layer there, that little plastic bit. And you can take off your mask for now. This is Christ's body broken and restored for you. Take and eat in remembrance of him. invite you to peel off the next layer carefully. This is the cup of life. 
love and light poured out for you and ever flowing throughout the whole web of life. Let us pray. Holy, compassionate, and loving God, we've come to this table with all our kin and share with all in need. For in this moment, we see and experience your reign. We give thanks for the gift of healing for those in pain, the gift of reconciliation for those estranged, the gift of assurance for those in doubt, the gift of hope for those in tears. May we who share these gifts share Christ with one another and with the whole of creation and keep our eyes and hearts open so that we may see your reign in our lives. Amen. Well, as we go from this place, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I wish you all a happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. And as we leave, we go knowing that we are surrounded by the love of God, that we have the spirit that dwells within each one of us to empower us and encourage us, and we have Jesus as a guide and friend. Amen.
Everybody's home.